the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies. He's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you. He's absolutely Jason, he's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies, he's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you. Hey everybody, welcome to Absolutely Jason Stewart with my show. And my guests today are the filmmakers, directors, co director, co-writer, of the big indie hit Tangerine. Welcome to the show, Sean Baker and Chris. Say it, say it, oh, say it wrong. Like Oshkosh, Prakash. Prakash. I don't want to say, say it anyway. I don't want to say it wrong because that's. I, I, I accept all I've gotten way, way too many emails about how I mispronounce, let me think, almost everybody's <laughs> name. So th this is sort of a redo. We did the show and the sound wasn't cool. So those of who heard it live will hear now another, another version because we're not mm. going to redo it exactly. Mm. But we are doing a redo. And this is how great these guys are to me. That they both said yes. Of course, I'll do the show yes. for you again. Yes, we love you, Jason. Oh. Yeah, we've actually had this happen before. And then you uh, said no way. Podcast, and it was in Brentwood or something. And I was like, Nah, it's a little too far to do a redo. But still, <laughs> but for you, we'll do a redo. Oh, redo I, and this is the film. It's Tangerine, and this film has won I don't know how many awards. We're now in a couple of weeks. We're up for the uh, four Spirit Awards. That would be Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress. <laughs> Best Picture, and the Producing Award. No, uh, the Producing Award, unfortunately. It's already done? It's already done. Darren Dean. Darren Dean, but he also got nominated. And I got to tell you, to me, th three independent yeah. producers oh. in the whole, uh, of every independent film that's made everywhere. Darren, if you're listening, honey, this is th how <laughs> three people of every yeah, independent. every every Award. Exactly. Every every crazy person that thinks they can make a film on an iPhone because of you. <laughs> Darren Dean and Sujing Sal, who, who produced this film, they're master master indie producers. They get things done that you just don't understand. But still, Darren is uh, Darren is too. I mean, yeah, I, no, I know how Darren and he Shichang called me. I don't know how many times and says, "I want to do this. Yeah. I want to do this. Sh I, I, where is a, a gay bar? A gay? I'm having trouble with Hamburger Marys. Yeah. They're not calling me back. I don't know what's got to do. Set the thing, and, and then finally, it all, and he got he he wanted that location. Yeah. Because I gave him like six others. Oh yeah. And I even called the people at the fault line when I knew the owner and everything, and he knew what he wanted to do. Yeah. And I thought it was so uh, incredibly wonderful, you know, that he just he just was there, and, and also uh, Cha Ching. Am I saying it right? Xi Ching. Xi Ching. Yeah. She also was. Uh, both of them were so wonderful. I mean, they're they're basically a, a team. All of you are like well, a uh, family it of depends people. Depends on like each individual pro uh, product will project. I'm sorry. I just drove back from San Francisco. It's rush okay. Together. Rush hour. Um, so uh, every individual project, we sort of sometimes titles change. Uh, on this one, they they, they co-produced. You uh, co-directed uh, a film with her with, yes, ca called Take Out, Take Out yeah. which was in the Asian world. You did another film in New York called Prince of Broadway, and that's how I got to know you because I saw that film first, Thanks. and which is sort of a film sort of for the – those at home who don't know, very similar to Gloria in the sense that it was about a younger oh, boy, and it, and it, but it, yet it was with a guy, not a woman, and they were in trouble, and he was uh, selling. It was, yeah, it was about um, a West African immigrant who is undocumented and is here selling counterfeit goods in Manhattan. And one day, an ex-girlfriend shows up and throws a kid in his lap and says, this kid is yours. I'm too busy. You have to take care of him. So it's this hustler who's now having to hustle on the streets with a kid who may or may it not It seemed like a, an homage, in a sense, to Gloria with Cassavetes I mean, a little. I love Cassavetes. You know what I mean? It seemed like an homage, in a sense, different characters, different people, right. but a similar situation where you get stuck with a kid and th that you're not a parent and what to yeah. do with it and how that yeah. the uh, the need of a child can just sort of change your whole life. Yeah. I mean, other than that. But that was the first Cassavetes I saw, actually. Oh, Really? The, really, the only mainstream sort of Cassavetes. That was the Cassavetes that was running on the HBO back in the. Oh, it was the. I think it was his yeah. most financially biggest yeah. film ever. Yeah. Though I got to say, my favorite is A Woman Under the Influence. Oh, really? And that's how I was interested to me. To me, you are a modern day John Cassavetes. Oh wow! Well, you really are. Special respect. No, but you really are. But, um, husbands is mine. I really? Have a, I have a husband poster on my wall that I found for five dollars in the back of a comic oh. book shop in Detroit, wow. and it's worth so much. Really? Yeah. Mm. It's a one sheet original. Wow. So we'll just talk about this for a second, then we'll go into everything else. So that you've won uh, the Gotham Award, you won for best audience. Um, yes. And Maya, 
Taylor won Best uh, Newcomer, and Kiki, uh, yeah, Kiki was nominated, nominated also nominated, for it, yeah. but she didn't win, but Maya won. Right. So that's incredible. We've won a couple ensemble yeah. awards. We've won uh, all over the world. Best Picture, Best Audiences have been nominated. There's been at least 50 different things. E nice. Yeah, I mean, it's it, this is probably your most successful film ever. Am I, am I right? In terms of awards, I think Prince might beat it. Really? Yeah. Prince but actually but was something that just kept going on for two or three years. We were like the underdogs, so we kept on winning all these festivals. Really? But yeah, but yeah. But I think but the awareness of this, the I awareness can't. Thing. It, it I have two little parts in the film, yeah. and I get an email almost every day. Wow. And I'm not even, I'm not Maya, I'm not Kiki, I'm not James. Yeah. So to me, that says if people know that I'm in this movie, they actually watched it. Yeah. And the great thing about a movie like this is it keeps going on Twitter. You know, we run the Twitter page, and so every day you'll see new people discovering the film, and it's the greatest feeling in the world. You know, because you see what my t fans are tweeting yeah. and everybody. I yeah, mean, I'm it's just. It's nice just to see when people. Have uh, and also say. now the difference is now there's so much more downloadable. It's on yes. Time Warner. It's right. on Netflix. It's right. on. A, there isn't a. a uh, I yeah, guess the downloadable feature that it does not have it anywhere. And for some reason on Time Warner, they have it under drama, and I do not know why. It's a comedy. And they have it under comedy under other streaming services. And yeah. Sometimes people get upset at that. Really? Yeah, we, 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 ev we get a lot of tweets now, especially since it's hit Netflix. There's like a couple of tweets an hour, and it's so funny to see people's reactions. But one person was like, this is not a comedy. How dare this get categorized under comedy? And then, of course, the opposite. like Whitney But I think it is a comedy yeah. f first with dramatic overtones because of the situation. Right. So we'll yeah. get it over the, the usual. We'll talk about more interesting things. But the usual thing, the film was shot on an iPhone 5. 5S. 5S, mm -hmm. which is, I think, the first time this, that a film was shot on this with all the accoutrement of... I guess the, 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 the stick and the thing. Yeah, and we the should say that too. There have been a lot of press where people will attack us on Twitter thinking that we claim to be the first I not film the shot first. on an iPhone. We're not the first by any means. We might have been the first to get distribution Magnolia from Ma through Magnolia. And well, let's be, uh, Magnolia has well, probably been, I, I got to say, but give a shout out to her. Um, Ariana, I mean. Oh, from Magnolia. I mean, man. Yeah. Did she go to bat for this movie? Yeah. And I kept explaining to Maya Taylor, who's been on the show, and everybody knows her on this show, she's t only 24, and yeah. I kept explaining to her, this doesn't happen at every movie. Right. Somebody doesn't right. champion a movie like this. Right. And uh, you know, being on a list to get nominated for an Oscar right. doesn't happen ever yeah. to no, some no, people. It's incredible. Magnolia has been really wonderful, and so have the, um, the Duplass brothers. Because Duplass it was brothers. actually Mark and Jay who first said, let's do an Oscar campaign. Mm. They were the ones who were like, let's make this happen, along with Adam Kirsch from Brigade Marketing. And so they went to Magnolia and they said, can you guys get behind this? And thank God Magnolia loved the film enough where they did. And, you know, it's a smaller distributor. You know, they're not going to be able to do it like, say, Weinstein used to do when he would just oh make man. a film win an Oscar. But um, – but they really did get it out there. They pushed it. Just to be on the list. Yeah. Just to be in the people don't even don't, Just to be in the room yeah. with this is extraordinary, to, I think. And for those who don't know, the Oscars are, are allowed to have 10 pi best pictures now. It's been for the last five or 10 years. Yeah. But the deal is, is that you have to get a certain amount of votes to be able to be one of the 10 pictures. Yeah. And I was just saying as I was walking Sean in from the parking lot that I think Tangerine and Straight Out of Compton should have got nominated. Thank you. But if you look at the... Uh, people who are Academy members, it's mostly straight white guys yeah. on an average age of, I think, early 60s. 63, 63 like yeah. yeah. 63 or 64. 23% women. Yeah. Not sure if there are any transgender people in it at all. Right. The gay people, I would assume, that is quite low. And I, would, I wondered how many people really watch this movie. Sally Kirkland, who's a, a dear friend of mine, mm. Oscar nominee, for Anna, who's also been on the show, said that she watched it, voted for it, and we talked about it. She's oh, thanks, Sally. Yeah, so she's, you know, <laughs> and now it, you can get the Blu-ray version uh, on Amazon and any other uh, downloading service. You know what's cool about the Blu-ray? Not to make this an information. It's got the extras. The extras featuring Joey the Doorman talking about the backstory of Joey the Doorman, which is fascinating. Oh, I play Joey the Doorman. Yes. Though I think <laughs> in the film that my name is Joe the Doorman. Mm, Am no, I correct? It's Joey the Doorman. I have no idea. It's I, Joey. I, I, is it Joey? Yeah. I think it's Joe. But so I don't check know. Those credits. IMDb doesn't the IMDb doesn't match the credits. Or? I don't know. I think no, so. I, I think I have to look at it because I think Let's it is, which would be an interesting little bit of trivia. Let's check that. No, I I believe it's Joey, but I could you know be wrong.
but yeah, everybody, we, you know, it's fun because we got, we tried to get every bit, you know, part, no matter how small, to come in and talk about the. Uh, you didn't do it with everybody. The roles. You Some were people picky. weren't available. You were picky, though, about who you chose, I think. Some people weren't. Yeah, uh, you, cho- you chose really tried. cool people because there's a lot. I think it's re- it's like the cream of the crop of everybody that was in the movie. I don't think people realize that we have people like Clue Gulliker, who's basically a Hollywood legend. I just saw him the other day walk the, down the, the street. Cab, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people in this that have uh, in- interesting histories in in Hollywood that uh, that we try to load it with. And the other, I think, thing that people have discussed the most is the film an improvisation, is the film a documentary. Hmm. Let's state it right now, right here, right now. You guys created this idea. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and for me, as a person who, who my career right. has been very, very uh, built on, on improvising. I, yeah. I've gotten a lot of parts. People have let me do that a lot. And I know that as an actor, improvising in a film, if you don't have a directors and writers creating a story, your film could be this big blah. I mean, we've seen a lot of TV shows that try to do that. So explain that, that process of how you created this film and how the improvisation was really guided. Well, Sean and I worked, it depends on the project. Well, this one, specific- this one specifically, we had come off of a film called Starlet, and uh, originally it was much more of a loose story. N- no three-act structure at all. Sean just wanted to do more of a cinema verite about a, a girl who happened to be an adult film star but on her day off, looking for a lost dog, combing the streets of Hollywood. And so the real life of people when they're not actually doing what they're doing. Right. right. They're doing it, what does the woman at Donut Time do when she's not at Donut Time? Right. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and that evolved into something that became Starlet. But the idea, that seed of an idea, never really left our, our systems, I don't think, where we wanted to just follow a character through these sh- sections of Hollywood that are not normally focused on in film. And then yeah. you met Maya Taylor at the Gay and Lesbian yeah. Center. Right. We actually she introduced you to Kiki. Yes. yes. And they were roommates. They were roommates at the time. And when we saw the two of them together, you know, we were at first just setting out to look for collaborators and consultants from that world, you know. Uh, it's your responsibility when you're not from, you know, we're two cis, uh, you know, white guys. I know and that we, cis thing. We, you know, I, I know no one that knows that. It's so really? brand new. Yes, you guys are so it cool is. and so hip. I think you're talking about your I, sister I, or something? My, one of my dear friends who is transgender said, she said, oh, God, not another word. We can't add another oh. letter. L-G-B-T-Q-S-T. Anyway, <laughs> and be, we got to take a break. We're sure. going to be right back. We're here with Chris and Sean from the movie Tangerine on Absolutely Jason Stewart. Please stay with us. Don't change that channel. Oh, my God. We don't have a channel anymore. We'll be right back. from you. And you're tuned into T Radio V. Hello, T Radio V. Hello for us. Hi, guys. My name is Steve Ranazizi. My name is Mary Elizabeth Ellis. My name is Katie Azelton. You're watching TV on the radio, but you're not watching it, you're listening to it because radio on TV. Hi, T Radio V. <laughs> Keep that radio going inside that television set. I love T Radio V. Trust her. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Hey, Alexander. All right, serious business. Okay, here. ready, guys? Serious ready? business. Radio voice, everybody. Okay, here we go. Let's just play. We should put music on and just dance for a minute. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I have to stop and say one thing. I have to say two words. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. So join us and the rest of the T Radio V. Ready? Are we on? Give me some music. Watch this. Ready? Wait, are we rolling? No. Oh, is this real? Like, I was just totally is it kidding. Oh, let's start again. Start again. Say, say that. Again. Start again. Keep going. <laughs> I could do real jazz. <laughs> do jazz dance hands. Start again. That was a shtick. I was doing a shtick. Well, the hair is blonde, it's dye. Yeah, Just because you don't have any hair, and he doesn't have any hair, and I have all this fake right, start hair. Again, start again, start again. Fine. How's the hair and the I feel like I'm in a puzzle. <laughs> any show you can have, I can have better. Any show you can have, I can have better. Are we filming all this? Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> this is the good stuff. You're short and you know it. I know it was a lot of hodgepodge, but that's good, right? Hodgepodge is good to cut. Let's do the intro one more time. Menopause. 
Hello, T Radio V. Hello, for us. Hi, guys. My name is Steve Ranazizi. My name is Mary Elizabeth Ellis. My name is Katie Azelton. You're watching TV on the radio, but well, you're not watching it, you're listening to it because radio on TV. Hi, T Radio V. <laughs> Keep that radio going inside that television set. I love T Radio V. Trust her. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. He's absolutely Jason, he's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies, he's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you. Hey, Alexandra, come here. Listen, have you seen Cindy? Cinderella. Looks like someone has a crush. Cindy's back on the block? Oh, yeah, she's back. She's back, and she's going hard. Merry Christmas, bro. Woo! <laughs> I got some good news to tell you about me and Chester. I know what it is. You're breaking up with him. Thank God. I'm going to be cheating on you like that. Wait, 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 what? You, you didn't know? Hmm. White wife. Bushy. Her name starts with a D. Danny. Desiree. Destiny? You're making me lose my game. She's some white fish. That's her. She know me with real fish. She is like a real fish, girl, like vagina and everything. Girl, calm down. It's not that serious. I will go with you under one condition. You must promise me that there's not going to be any drama. I promise. I promise. Look at me in my eyes and promise. I promise no drama, Alexandria. Whoa! What the? Oh, boy. Chris Brown, the girl. What did you do to her? Does your friend ever shut up? No. She's been talking ever since I met her. This one has one shoe. She from the hill. She hillbilly. Chester. Since him. Who's your man? Who's hot piece for you? Cindy, what do you see in him? Talk to me. We've been out of jail for 24 hours. She's already causing drama. She hired the police. The cops are coming. Come on, girl. Out here, it is all about our hustle. And that's it. The yeah. world can be a cruel place. Yes, it is cruel. God gave me a penis. Trailer that's there for a tangerine. Today. That's my favorite trailer out of all my films. It's so great. Except that's the one I'm not in. But <laughs> I'm in some of them. Um, so we were talking during the break about how one promotes a film. Now, I remember you said to me, don't say anything about the iPhone to anybody, please. And I didn't really get that at first because I didn't get that it was such a big deal. But when we got to Sundance last year, man, it was like they were up. Everybody was like, I got questioned. Well, now anybody can do a film. Anybody can do a film on an iPhone. And I, the first thing I said was no. You got to be brilliant. You have to have an incredible cinematographer. You have to have an incredible director, writers, producers, people that know what they're doing. And and this film was put together through fr by the writers, by yeah. the writers. We, we knew that people would perceive it as a gimmick, and that was one of the things we were trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. So we didn't announce it. wasn't in the press notes. We no. Didn't let anybody know it was actually shot on the iPhone. Well, I mean, there was a select few who knew, but um, nobody knew until the end of that first screening when it was actually in the end. And then let's say it went nuts. And it really did it go nuts. Great. I mean, it really did become, you know, part of the conversation, but in a good way. It wasn't, it didn't seem like we were trying to sell the film on it, which we weren't, we weren't trying to do. So, um, I think it went perfect. Yeah. And that's where I think I was wrong because I thought, oh, tell people. Mm -hmm. And then I remember you saying, you know, let's not do any pictures until we actually get at Sundance and show pictures from the film. And then we've, sort of rolled it out. Mm -hmm. And you also, what you did is you got everybody involved from extras to, to the Dupas brothers. I mean, everybody from, there was nobody that was left out of this movie that didn't feel a part of the family of Tangerine. Mm -hmm. I certainly did, and I can't thank you guys enough. It, just the fact of feeling like you're a part of a piece of art that I think it, that I'm so proud to be in makes everyone want to go, okay, let's get our social media going, let's get our friends. Right. I mean, when the, when the movie opened, here at the Arclight, I had like 25, 30 just yes. friends oh, yeah. come to the movie, to the opening, Thank plus another 
you know, 50 of fans. Yes, no, I remember. Thank yeah, you. Well, to it's that so cool. an ensemble cast, and I, we just wanted to bring that into, you know, the release of the film, too. Make it an ensemble party. <laughs> you know, it just sounds yeah, but everybody <laughs> doesn't do that. There's this thing about who should do this and who should go yeah. here and who should go there, who's the important thing. And I think that for me, and it's in, now I'm in another film going to Sundance, Birth yeah. of the Nation next yeah. week, and that's all going. Congratulations. Yeah. Yes. Good luck. That's I saw the movie. Oh, is it good? It's it's very poetic, yeah. and it's violent, yeah. and it's beautiful, and it's sad, and there's also some lovely, wonderful moments, mm -hmm. and I, I, I still, I'm going to talk about it when I come back. When's your pr premiere date? Premieres on the t Monday, a week from, uh, oh. uh, today is Wednesday, but a yeah. week from one day, w Monday, wow. of, of last Monday. Exciting. Yeah. Um, I'm jealous what you have to go back. Uh, section? It's, it's in dramatic competition. Oh, yeah. And I tell everybody what you said, because when we were at Sundance, you said, I said, God, we're in Sundance. You, you said, yeah, but can I say it? Is it okay? Cool. But, yeah, <laughs> but you, you wanted to be in dramatic competition. I think you always do. And that's um, the best one to be in, is it not? For sales. Yes. yes. And I thought that they, and they really were not, I mean, because no one knew that they put you in hip, cool films or whatever, what, that <laughs> section. Called next. Well, that's the thing. There's, isn't there their old saying where every dramatic competition could be, I mean, every next, sorry. Every dramatic competition could not be next, like the next or, or something that doesn't fit any I easily like describable that. I, I mode. Think, so I think the audience should decide who should get the awards, but that's just me. Um, there, there was the an jury audience members. award in our next section. And who won next, that? Uh, James White, which I actually think is- Have you seen yeah, it? Yeah, I, I have it. The best I just got it. Year. I'm gonna watch it this I week. love it, I love it. So I actually think that that, I think it's, it's one of my favorite films of the year. I think it might be the best U.S. film of the year. Wow. So, wow. other than Tangerine. Well, the fact that that's not in main competition, you see, that's kind of the weird part about it. James White probably should have been. It's it's very hard. It's very. Well, hard. I think it's about how many stars are in your film and ha who's behind right. it and what company it is and, and how it's going to sell. Yeah. Budget, everything, you know. Let's face it; it's an honor just to be there any way you can be there. Oh I God, mean, yes. Know. But every, I think, I think that everybody wants to be in competition. I, I, myself, I, I don't. I always think the audience should decide. Well, I think that next. Should have a competition that'll solve it. Oh, yeah. yeah, why not? I think they're working on that. Oh, are oh, they? Oh, yeah, <laughs> who gave them that idea? <laughs> um, As every filmmaker complains. So, do you guys feel that things should go slower rolling out and not and get not, or you, you think it works better that way, or does it work better to do things in all at once and have just this big blast? I think it depends on the project, don't you? I think it's I don't know a case anymore. by case basis on a film like this. I mean, I think. A, I would do it the same way. If it was a little bit bigger of a film with stars, I think naturally you'd want to have those stars get the word out. You know, um, that's one of the things that we've never, uh, up to date, had the luxury of. If it is a star that can go on like a Jimmy Fallon and talk about the film mm -hmm. and expose it to that amount of you know uh, people watching the show. I really wish that they would. They used to do that in the day, mm. is they would bring people on shows yeah. to do that. But you guys did everything but. I mean, really. Yeah, we and, and again, New York Times, L.A. Times. I mean, the press has been wonderful. W. I mean, yeah. uh, just I, I, oh, W was great because they gave Maya that pictorial, or they they gave her like two pages. And right, she, but that was just one of the many magazines that did that. Yeah, for her. oh yeah, yeah. She's been she's had a few photo spreads, so that's been wonderful. And then, uh, and then just the critics we've gotten on a lot of top tens. Very. That's nice the thing for me. Like when you see the New York Times predicting who should win the Oscars and we're on that list it's like you know you were me, on I think a, out of all the lists you were on my heart 80% of them or something it's, it's amazing to see that that they're thinking of you in those terms what's really neat about the film to me is not just the story itself it's the way the story is put together to me seems like some sort of weird fucking magic hocus <laughs> pocus trick because I only knew that this was a movie about a doorman named Joey <laughs> who was trying to let people wonder why this woman was wearing one shoe. Yes, that was the first I'm, draft. Th yes. that's all I, but, th th <laughs> but that's all I know is my part. Yeah. So I, s I go in there. I remember sitting in the theater, and I hear rat-a-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat. The sound design for this film yeah. is brilliant. The sound design takes you by the hand yeah. and sort of grabs you and pulls you through this entire movie. I feel like that's what you're doing. Can I say some, one thing really quick? You're set on him, the show. You can say up. anything you want. You know, <laughs> sometimes you go into a movie and, and the filmmaker has a vision of, you know, he's shooting a scene to this music. This film, I believe, spoke to Sean in the editing room, and this film told Sean what the music was going to be. 
because you went on and you got a lot of really new people yeah, be, and I it's an album that people can get what's the yeah yeah they can get the album through milan records we have a cd and everything that you can purchase on itunes but yeah i told uh getting back to our producers darren dean and chi ching zhou i told them don't budget for music because this is not going to have a note in the entire film so i remember you yeah, telling yeah, me that and i it thought was in post-production that i discovered it needed it and not only did it need it it needed wall-to-wall -wall music and so it, because like but it wasn't just yeah. music it was sound Oh, well it was yeah, a sound design because the music you yeah. chose was almost somewhere between sound and footsteps and running and pulling and it feel. Was. I mean, it, it yeah, just. Well, Jeremy Grady, who did the sound design for us, he just really. I told him, look, I want when there's not music on there, I just want the city to be really loud, like a New York almost, because I, we're from New York originally. Mm -hmm. It's like that. It was that those city sounds that almost are like a soundtrack to themselves. They, the film feels like that. twenty minutes. Oh, that's mm. nice. you know, that's and my favorite scene, review. of course, in the film, which I've told before, I'm going to say again, is the scene in the car wash where the name of the movie sort of comes from. Oh, that was actually one of the few things that was really, uh, I, I think, the sound design. You thought about that early on. Yes. We wanted that because we thought it was going to be a one shot in this car wash. We wanted the soundscape to just be. We knew we were it's so beautiful. It's the cab driver played by say his name is almost Karin Karagulian. Karagulian, who really um, has this relationship with Maya's character, and there's this this friendship and this kindness, and and I know it sounds weird as he as as he gets a blowjob, he gives her a blowjob. It, it, it was just so we wanted a cacophony of wet audio madness. But it was also so touching because of their. It was almost like, you need me, I need you. Oh yeah, it was so wonderful. But we're going to take a break yeah. on that note, and we're going to be back here at Absolutely Jason Stewart, my guest the uh, filmmakers from Tangerine. Please stay with us. We have more to tell you. So much more. Don't change the channel. He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. Welcome to Big Mama Nature's house. <laughs> There's a war. Yeah. Let's have debris all over him. That's Bleeding. a bad man. Badass man. Woo. Our chairs are damp. Our chairs are wet. Our, our chairs no, are I'm slightly crazy. damp. I'm gonna have to use that People, in the scene. This is Where's... just like apocalypse now. So this is a good idea to light a torch near a highly flammable costume, mainly around my crotch area. We're gonna get cut out, yeah. It's just gonna be cuts of Jean-Claude. They'll like pause them with loud music over it. What are the chances of a dangerous animal in this island? Zero. So just come. Uh, uh. Hi, this is Danny Woodburn, and you're watching T Radio V. Did it come up? Is it all right? There we go. He's good. Radio V. Radio inside of TV. Oh my God, I love it. Keep it locked. You are the bomb. Mwah. What better way? What? I can't think of a better intersection than radio and TV. Right? Hey, T Radio V. Thomas Sadowski, what's up? T Radio V. I love T Radio V. Because we need more kids watching TV. Hey guys. This is Chriselle Stiles. Hi, I'm Stassi. I'm Joel David Moore. I'm Frank Infante. Hey, man, this is Richie Ramon. What's up out there? He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. sure you know whose it is and you're pretty sure that he or she has no idea that they ever had it what would you do hey do you remember me i bought the thermos from you what's wrong my cab's gone well 
I can give you a ride. No, no problem. I'll call another. I won't take no for an answer. So what do you do? What do you mean, what do I do? I don't know, for like fun. Hi. What are you doing here? Bingo. Get up and hold my face. Stop playing with my board. Okay, open your eyes. Huh? Looks like a legit strip club in here, doesn't it? The pleasure to meet Jane's grandmother. She's not my grandmother. So were you ever married? Yeah. you have children? No. So what's up with the old lady? Somebody I'm helping out? Helping with what? She's not your friend. thought I would leave you. The best part is right here. Boom! <laughs> I've got bingo. Woo! Bingo! Bingo! You are one tough cookie to read. Stop, that's it. Stop, 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 stop. That's it. Do you back up a little tiny bit? That's too much. <laughs> I loved it. I saw that um, when I was working with you on uh, um, War in the Ape. Oh, no, we hadn't made it. We are yeah. about to make it. Yeah, War in the Ape actually gave birth to Starlet, believe it or not. We did oh, because they canceled it. Yeah. Uh, okay, then I saw it afterwards. We, we worked with a uh, – we had we did an episode where we had some stunt casting. I saw this in the theater. Yeah, oh, thank you for supporting. No, yeah. we, we worked with adult film stars, and when we would be hanging out with them on the set, we realized, you know, just how – ordinary they were and it kind of sparked our you know our uh, seeds for starlet which is like doing what i mentioned before about and the, the older day lady, in the life the older lady is set. tell us about the older her lady is the sidekick johnson and unfortunately she passed away this is her first and only role it's she was uh, so good yeah, at she's it. so good and uh she v she was always she was always on the fringe of the industry mm -hmm. she How was actually best friends with dudley moore she grew up around here in, in san francisco right and um, wow. she always wanted to do this, but she just didn't have the opportunity. And when we we were actually courting a pretty famous... Can you say um, who? No. Why not? Because it's not that. I, d I don't want to get sued. But, anyway, oh, okay. but it's on IMDb. I think it, somebody wrote it in the trivia section. I don't know. Oh, okay. But anyway, um, but uh, we were courting an, uh, a starlet of yesteryear. Sort mm -hmm. of a stunt casting thing where we wanted the older woman. Similarly, to be a like starlet. someone like who would it be like? Somebody like. <laughs> <laughs> well, just look at the Hitchcock girls. Let's just say. Okay. That. Okay. Gotcha. Right. So. Um, oh, anyway. if it was her, she would never do it. She was too prim and proper. Well, that's the thing. She was signed. Can on. I say who it is? What? No, I can't say. I, I, I won't. Whatever you want. I'm not going to. Uh, I don't want to get. He you will never confirm or yeah, deny. Won't, won't okay. Confirm. But anyway, no. What yeah. was great was who? that she. No, actually. Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> But that's, this a, is a, that's a good one. Okay, this is what I was that's doing. a good one. This is doing, I, I was doing, put the camera on me. Uh, the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. no. Yeah, I mean, but, but anyway, so, yeah, we, so we pursued her, and we were. Oh, we, I know who it was. We oh. almost got her, and then. Uh, and, uh, uh, what is, are you even saying <laughs> anyway, names? So basically what happened <laughs> was that she was signed on, and it seemed like it was going to happen, and then at the wow. last minute her people said, She's gonna need this much more money a day, and we're like, "This is SAG ultra indie, low budget stuff. We cannot do this. We mm -hmm. simply can't afford it. There's no negotiation here." Because I'm doing one of those tomorrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> so so basically, we lost her. We were about a month or a month out from shooting. Oh, it was dangerously close. close. And uh, we were all very scared, very depressed, and very stressed. And Shi Ching went, who was you know who produced it. Mm -hmm. She went, uh, executive produced it. She went off to the YMCA to relieve some stress and found the Sedka Johnson in the locker room. And and she texted me and said, I think we found our Sadie. And I said, okay, don't scare her because it's kind of look kind of weird if, you know, this Asian woman approaches somebody in the locker room. They might think she's stealing organs or something. <laughs> or, or <laughs> I was was like, she dressed? Okay. <laughs> That's well, just take a photo and get her contact information. We met up with her a week later and had her audition. She was wonderful, and she was totally mm. down for this, and she was up for improvisation, and it was great. And, and she turned out being wonderful in the film. She was. Yeah. And the star she passed away. She was a class after. act. Mm. But she, was, she did get to see the film uh, – 
you know, uh, get released. And she went to, she was able to do Q and A's yeah. and she oh. did South by, was she at South by Southwest? Uh, oh yeah. Wow. Yep. Unfortunately, she wasn't uh, present at the Spirits. But Dre Hemingway went up on stage and did something very. Dre, nice. of course, uh, from the daughter. Miro's daughter and great granddaughter, granddaughter yeah, yeah. instead of Hollywood royalty. Yeah, and she said something very nice about the Segta and how this is all. It was you all guys won her. the Robert Altman Award. Yes, the, for the un- best ensemble. Cast which cast. is so upsetting to me that you won it that year because I was. If, if you would have just got nominated for something else, we probably would have got nominated oh. for that award. <laughs> Not going to give it to the same group again. And, oh God, it was so upsetting. <laughs> But and the spotlight people got it like they need another award. There you go. You know, usually it, they are big films that get like our before us it was Margin Call. Oh. And then Scarlet, and then after us it was also in another one of these films with like all A listers or. You know, so it's, it's it was it was sort of like oh my god yeah. Hmm. You know. But uh, now how yeah, how so do they decide which actors are in the ensemble? That's the part that makes me panic. I would assume yeah, that's a good the question. entire uh, cast gets it. Is everybody uh, is there a but everybody doesn't you get have to have a speaking. Maybe it's the speaking line. Well, everybody, yeah, but in his no movie, that could be debatable. Be yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, so when the, uh, but they also give it to the casting director. So the casting Which I think is lovely. Gets it, and then but you didn't have one on Tangerine. No, we didn't. We couldn't it was basically one. Sean and our, our yeah. cast. Yeah. And anybody film. that you ever met. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, and that film is still available on all uh, downloading, it's and, also on and you can get it. Even though we love when people purchase it on iTunes because it actually brings revenue in, I have to warn everybody that it's censored on iTunes. Really, it's the only streaming service that it's censored on. So why see it on Netflix? <laughs> um, because there is a hardcore scene. In There's it. a lovemaking scene, <laughs> and it's real. So because of that, it's real. Yeah, I didn't know that. Actual sex. Yes, live. The, one of the mo- up to the day that I shot, there was a scene who who has Tan- sex live. Uh, we it is it James? Body double, body double for Drew Hemingway. Oh, so she didn't do it. Is no. it really? And she just said that. <laughs> um, that I, um, but it was up to. There was this one day on Star on Tangerine that was the most stressful day of my life, and I forgot which day it was. <laughs> it was. It was. Wow, I think it, I, I if think I had to guess, which one? I mean, the donut time. Uh, the madness. Oh, was donut a little, time. Yeah. Yeah. Before was that, that all shot in one day? No, that was two and a half, three. Two and oh, half, please. But it was extremely stressful because if we lost that, we would, the film would be nothing. And for and those who have seen it, the you movie, know, you're shooting the movie yeah. while they are actually yeah. having business. You yeah. could not stop. Right. You could not do anything. Right. And, uh, and uh, we, had to, we, we promised them that we would not interfere with their business. So therefore, <sighs> when customers came in, we had to make the choice right there and then. If the scene was too hectic and crazy, we would just stop mm. and let the customers do what they have to do. But if the scene was like a little low key, then we would actually try to work the customers into the scene and hope that it was fine. You were one crazy that. person. <laughs> you, you, you had to have that location, I'm sure. That was in your head. There was no that way. Was a, yeah. It was the yeah. F- yeah, the basis of it's we always knew we it was yeah. going to start. Because I'm there. watching the film. You know, I've seen the film probably 10 times. Yeah. And I'm watching the film every time in donut time to see who the people are on the street. Yeah. Are they the same people? And a lot of the times it's almost, I'd say around 75% of yeah. the time it's almost perfect. And the other times you don't really notice right. it yeah. as much. When we were first writing the script, it was always under the code title of, of Donut Time. We were just referring to the project as Donut Time. So what made you change it? Well, just oh. Aspiring to have a better a better titles. title than what you know. I love Donut Time. And, and you like that well, as the title of the film? Yeah, I I, I do. L- I mean, Tangerine is fine. We wanted it. We wanted a non you know literal title. We it's very not. Ambi- that right. was the title that everybody seemed to ki- keep coming back to. Like I would throw it out there, and everybody was like, "Really love that title." See, I think a lot of people. Well, first off, they like the fruit, or you know what I mean. But but also they, I think a lot of people like the Led Zeppelin song. <laughs> Maybe, but then there's oh, that yeah. foreign film but, that but said uh, oh, tangerines, the Estonian tangerines, film. and then you went shit. Yeah. Uh, we did all this, and oh my god! No, we almost did Tinseltown Follies. That would have made me throw up in my mouth. Uh, but I love it. No, it would have had a retro, you know, yeah. 1940s Tinseltown poster. Would have been like a throwback to the hour gang. I have to say, I would have gone for stuff. Donut Time, but that's just me. But I still love Tangerine. But see, Follies has an alternate definition. It's not just a musical act or whatever, uh, you know, review. Right. It also means, uh, what is it, foolishness or 
Yeah, we just didn't want people it, to take it, it the wrong way and think that we were saying our characters thing. were foolish. That yeah. was not so what, what it was intended to Oh, yes. And be, and also, so we're, we'll come back in just a second. We're going to talk about what you're doing next and also talk about some of the, uh, the whole idea of two white guys doing a film about transgender women of color. Right. And I'm going to say something about oh. it that I think is really important to say. So we're going to be back in just a second. And absolutely, Jason Stewart, please stay with us and we'll be right back. Okay? Yeah. He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. Hey, Geeks, wake up. We've got big news. I'm not going to mumble this time. Geekscape, the long running movie video game. Let me do one more. Hey, Geeks, we got big news. Geekscape, your favorite show about movies, video games, comics, and TV, is coming to T Radio V Monday, October 6th. And it'll be on every Monday from then on, 7 p.m. Until the apocalypse happens. We're all eaten by zombies. I'm Zoe Williams. And I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm Jeff Brown. And we make up the Zoe What Morning Show. You can find us here on TRadioV.com every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I make you think. He makes you laugh. And if I get a chance, I'll help you change. Or make you cry with his attempts at humor. Radio in TV. Can you relate? We'll make it happen. Look at Jeff. What you doing? Were you mumbling to yourself? Hey, no. back there mumbling. To them. To them. Radio V. And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically naughty. naughty. I'm never politically correct. Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> but only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. plus one, like... You know, there's a little too groping might be inappropriate, but I like the flirting. Well, when I, when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your <laughs> No! Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get Politically Naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. on T-Radio V. Yo, what's up? This is your boy Kyle Mass, and you're checking out T-Radio V. T-Radio V. T-Radio V. Hello, T-Radio V. Love you guys. Radio in TV. He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up. Here we go. Absolutely Jason Stewart, we're back. So we were talking about Starlet, and there was actually, actually simulated sex, and then the simulated sex no, was real. real. Yeah. Uh, explain. Well, okay. Um, setting so out I did not know this. this. Film, I can't making remember. a film about the porn industry, and it felt very dishonest to me to not have real sex in it. It was like... We were. It, it felt almost as if we were censoring ourselves or condemning the industry if we didn't actually show what these women were doing, like you know what their jobs were. I did not know that um, was real. So we have a scene that actually does push it into NC-17, well, rated X uh, territory, and yeah. because it was actually a manifesto of ours very early yes. on, we said we won't make this. This, just like we said, we're not going to make Tangerine without Donut Time. We said we're not going to make Starlet without a real. Scene. And also just the fact without that you know, it is another day. <laughs> you know, it's not a titillating scene. You know, when you watch the film, it's just another day at the office. Mm -hmm. right? You know, people are checking. You know, it's not anything that we yeah. shot in a sort of a stimulating way. It was meant to so just we, show yeah. her. You know, her job, a girl. That but we had to do it in a way where it was. We had a body double come in, um, an adult film actress by the name of Zoe Voss, and she looks phys physically like Dree Hemingway from the neck down. So <laughs> we shot this scene in the morning, and then we the sex scene, the real sex in the morning, and then the afternoon. Simulated Dree came sex. in. Yet yeah, Dree came in, and we did the re we simulated it. And I'll tell you one really thing. That was the most awkward day of the shoot because yeah. you know Dr it's Dree Hemingway, and she's there, and she's got her little pasties on, and uh, and you know I was doing continuity for that scene, and right. I had to position her exactly in the positions yeah, yeah, that were yeah. shot. We in had the morning. to show her images from the morning thing. This is how. This is where you your vagina your, should be. You put your ass up a little bit more, yeah, and you yeah. just want to say it more classy. Can you put yeah. your? How but do you? What do you do? Your There's butt. You can't really be classy with some sex terminology because there aren't there aren't clinical. Terms. It is, but when it, you say reverse cowgirl, there isn't a that's clinical it. That's term for that. <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> So that that was that day, but you know what? It was the most professional day of the shoot, was it not? Everybody I don't even was, know what reverse cowgirl is. Everybody was. <laughs> I mean, because I've never had a I haven't had a girl since I was twenty three. Um, it was when Donna Summer was on the radio, I think. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, that's a great image. I'm so uncomfortable. I don't know what to say. Um, so tell me, uh, what's up next for you guys? 
there's something really uh, uh, very up next. It's a yeah. it's a short that we just did for uh, Kenzo, which is a fashion label. Right. Paris. February third, it'll be online. Everybody can watch it. Yeah, it's a short film that we also shot on the iPhone. They came to me because of Tangerine. They, they were. Oh, you must have been thrilled. Well, no, actually, it was our decision. Oh, it really yeah, was? Yeah, because um, we shot in Slack. Who's your DP on this? Alexis Zabe, who oh, shot so it was uh, Pharrell's Happy Video. Oh, He's my God. Awesome. No, um, no uh, Radium was busy with other stuff, and just I just decided for this one, you know, why not mix it up a little bit? Uh -huh. And um, we shot well, Don't say that with my part. We're not mixing up <laughs> anything. <laughs> I'm in iPhone 6S Plus, yeah, 4K. So it was actually different. It's oh, different. so it's even better. It looks oh, different yeah. from Tangerine, yes. It's... Um, but the reason we did it is because we went to Slab City. Do you know what Slab City is? No. It's off of the Salton Sea. It's one of th one of two places in the United States that's actually considered off the grid. You can live really? there and not pay taxes. Where is it? What? It's it's off the Salton Sea, down in San Diego County. It's in well, California. It's actually uh, Imperial Valley, right? Imperial County. Yeah. It's it's an it's unreality. It's a it's like Mad Max land. Mm. It's crazy. Um, but it, it basically it's a community of people who live. Did you see anybody walking around with a metal fa face? Or I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, close. Um, oh, they, they live in RVs and trailers out there in this area that is that on seems homeless to me. But go concrete ahead. slabs. It was one once a military base. So basically, the U.S. government has said to these people, "You can live here and not pay taxes, but we're not going to provide you with any water or electricity." So it really is off the grid. It's so a great anyway. fallback for anybody that's just done with life yeah, and just want yeah. Let's move to Slab City. It's fantastic. New yeah. chapter. So we that's what I'm going to do. the showers in the 7-Eleven? No, they it, go in yeah. the they go in a little. Like I just river, saw the DiCaprio films. So I'm so upset right now. I, I don't even. Oh, know. The I was like, the Revenant. So, oh, the Revenant made me so crazy. crazy. He actually cuts the hose open, goes inside, brings the stuff out, yeah. puts it he on the side. He goes he full tauntaun. Yeah, g gets naked, then goes back in the horse, and that's where he sleeps for the night. I, I wanted to stand up in the movie theater and go, "I'm done. I'm um, done. I'm going home." Yeah. Can I say some little bit of Trivia that people okay. might not Is this know. Revenant trivia? Yes, it is. Oh, right. Um, okay. There is a film that came out in the 70s. Where they did um, the same exact thing? Yes. And everyone thinks it's... Tauntaun. It's... What's it, what is it? It's called Empire Tauntaun. Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah. Well, because that's what happens. You know, Han uh, has to slice open a Tauntaun and shove Luke in there to keep him warm on, the, on Hoth. Oh, my God. And so everybody's making that comparison. But you're yes. saying that – you're saying Tauntaun copied? It's a Swedish film called The Immigrants. That, oh, uh, oh Criterion... Liv Oman was in, right? Yes. Exactly. Nominated for an Oscar, Best right. Actress. And and are you impressed this? or what? Criterion is – That's yeah, pretty impressive. impressive so yeah. or did, did the Kirsch – It was in 1973, right uh, I believe. Did Irvin Kirshner copy that or pay homage to that? Definitely. I think it was 73. Wow, I think it was the year that she lost to Glenda Jackson for A Touch of Class wow. and Barbara Streisand. So you tell me what. whole uh, cinema show. I wow. think I should. Yeah. It's, and you should be on it with me. We should do it together. <laughs> so tell me what's up next. I want to know. Well, yeah, yeah, so, 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 so check out this Kenzo short. It's called Snowbird, and I'm really happy with it. I February it star 3rd. It stars Abby Lee, who was in Mad, Mad Max, Max as the dad. Fury Road. Right, one of the beautiful one of the girls. Yep, yep. And um, lots of other. And then what's next is that we're trying to get a feature off the ground that hopefully we shoot in uh, in the summer. God, and I'm free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and do you, can you give us any little little tweak of what the film's about? We just want to. We don't want to repeat ourselves. We want to do something totally different and, than what people might not be expecting from the next Sean film. I hope um, so. So something it won't be iPhone. Actually. So we're gonna. You're gonna be like Ryan Murphy. So you're gonna have all the same people but playing completely different roles. Well, that's what you know. That's what we try to do. You know, when you find people, uh, uh, you know, you guys are all so diverse. I mean, if you look at Mickey O'Hagan, we were talking about her before. Oh. People don't realize that's her in Starlet as the assistant to the point uh, to uh, you know. Karin Karaguli. Karin. Well, we Karin. did the scene together, uh, and she's running on the street, and I say, "This one doesn't have a shoe." And I see this girl, and she's a mess, and the eyeliner, and the thing, and the, the shorts. It's a really top, good performance. I mean, I thought she was brilliant. That's Real, yes. That's the thing when you when actors such as yourself or her go in Sean films. I think people do think it's a little bit, you know, docu, and they don't realize the performances you guys are all giving. I can't so. thank you enough for being on the show again. This oh, is the last time. Us. I swear to God. <laughs> um, Can we check the tape? Before please, we ch <laughs> please check the tape before we go. Please, if anybody wants to get a hold of them, uh, their Twitter, oh, everything. Yeah. Uh, your Twitter handle is. Go well, ahead. we have at Tangerine Film on Twitter, uh, Facebook.com slash Tangerine Film. Sean is at Lil Film, L I L Film. And my name, you can look it on the poster, Chris Bur at Chris Burgosh. And if you forget everything about them, just go to jasonstewart.com, S T U A R T, and I will send you in the right direction. I love you guys more than life itself. <laughs> Likewise. Thanks. Take care, everybody. You Until too. next week. Bye bye.
He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. You are watching T Radio Me. Radio and TV.